Hi plant enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel. My name's Mark, also known as Your Babylon, and in today's video, it's actually an update video on this, my IKEA plant cabinet. So if you haven't seen how I set it up and a little bit of a plant tour, go and check the link here. I've also added it in the description below. That's the first video about this. I've had it for over a year now, so I thought it was time I did an update video to show you about what I've learned about having the cabinet any issues that I've overcome, products that I've got in there that help my plants, and just general questions and things like that that I've seen in the plant community about the cabinet. Hopefully I can answer some of those and make people's lives easier. So I'm going to start the video off with showing you some of the products that I've got in the cabinet, things that I've changed, issues I've overcome, and then towards the end of the video, there'll be a bit of a plant tour and I'll give you an update of the, the plants that I've got inside the cabinet. So getting on to my first issue, and that was to find a replacement for the original IKEA Vaxa light. They don't do them now, it's so unfortunate, they're absolutely brilliant, I love them, I wish they did still do them. They stopped doing them about two months after I got my cabinet, like I said, my cabinet's over a year old now. So it's taken me a long time to try and find an alternative that I'm happy with, and I'm gonna show you that now. It's the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bar, you probably want 15 or 22 watts, that'll be fine for a cabinet and two of them for each layer that you've got. So that's what I'll be using once these fail as my alternative. So let's get on to the second issue I've overcome and that's fans or ventilation. Super, super important in your cabinet, you must have ventilation happening. The plants need airflow. So I've changed the fans so many times and that's not because they failed or broken in the cabinet, it's because I haven't found the right one for my needs. So a fan that I want, and maybe you guys do too, is one that you can control remotely. I have a Wi-Fi power strip. I'm just gonna show you that now. And that allows me to set up schedules and remotely control my fans, my lighting, and my heat mat. So I really like that, I find it very useful. But Emma from Good Growing found these fans here. I like them because you can set them to always on, so when I control it with the Wi-Fi power strip, it just comes on straight away. So I can set schedules up, fantastic. So you have the ability to adjust the positioning of the airflow, and I stick it on with command strips. Some people have messaged me saying that they're having issues with making it stay on, so I'm gonna show you that now. So here's one of those fans, it's actually from the lower level. If you're interested in these fans, I've put a link in my description below. Now what you need to do if you're gonna use these fans and you're gonna stick them on with command strips is you must peel off the bottom. There's two layers at the bottom, there's a plastic layer and then there's a piece of flare with text, like a, some instructions on it. If you put that command strip on either of those layers, eventually one of those layers will just peel off and the fan will drop and land on a plant. You don't want that to happen. So peel them both off, stick your command strip on and then place your fan where you want it and it will stay, trust me. I have had no issues with mine since I've done that. And lastly, just talking about the fans again, I'm not quite finished there with the fans. I don't think I found the fan that I want. So next thing I'm after is a fan that actually oscillates so the airflow can move much better and it can have a switch that's always on like this. So that's what I'm looking for. If you know where that is, please comment below so I can add it and share it with everybody in the community. Let's get on to the third issue and it's not an issue I've experienced, but it's one I hear people say on forums, on my posts and things like that. And that's to do with these pegboards. So some people have been saying that the pegboards have been getting moldy. I think that's because of two reasons. One is because the pegboard is actually compressed wood and if that becomes too wet, so your humidity is too high or it's too damp, it expands and then once it's hit that level, then mold and things like that can happen on your board. Now how I get around that, because like I said, I've not had that issue, is my humidity is always about 65 to 75. It's a bit lower now because I've got the doors open but that has meant that my board has never expanded and I've got two of them, never an issue for me. Plus every month I actually take all the plants out and I clean it as well. So that's what I recommend. Keep your humidity at a certain level. Don't let that board get soaking wet so that it expands so it can have mold at, latch onto it. 
clean it out every month as well. It's, it's a good practice to do that, to so make sure there's no pests in there and there's no mold or rot happening anywhere. And lastly, one of the things that I'd like to talk about that people are having issues with are pests. In a cabinet, if you get pests, it can spread pretty quickly. I actually use biological pest control, so I order these little sachets, they've got little mites or bugs in there, they're predatory, and this one I'm, I'm holding up right now is something that kills thrips, which are the thing that I, I worry about the most of my plants, because everything else I seem to manage with absolutely fine, but thrips are annoying. So I'm gonna recommend one down below in my description in the comments, it's in the UK, Anywhere else, I'm not sure, but if you look online, you should be able to find those. If you're not into having little mites that are predatory and killing the bad bugs, then you're gonna to have to use a pesticide. In my cabinet, there's plants that are worth a lot of money and they're really important to me, so I try and give them the best care in the cabinet. Everything outside of my cabinet, the regular house plants, I use Provanto pesticide. Again, I'll add that in the description. Fantastic, and if you've got thrip issues, to me, it's the only one that actually manages to deal with that. So definitely recommend. So before we get on to the plant tour, and I should have a little show about what plants I've got in the cabinet. I think the next thing that I want to do in the cabinet is I want to remove the glass. I don't want a glass separation there. I'm going to use a wire mesh one. In the EU, people can go to this place and just buy one and just cut it to the size really easy and get it in there. Some people have suggested they can go to home base in the UK and you can buy a sort of wire shoe rack again cut it and it fits in perfectly if you're looking for inspiration or to connect it with other people that are going through this plant cabinet journey you just want to look at the pictures there is one place you want to begin and that is the ikea greenhouse cabinet page on instagram it's run by robin it's an absolutely fantastic page there's great people on there that are going through this some for years loads of experience pictures and knowledge to share check it out now let's get on with the tour of the plants inside so we're starting at the top shelf. Let's go in and see uh, what plants I've got. So we'll, we'll go to the very top left. So over here, this is where I keep some Anthurium babies. So I've got a Splendidum, Magnificum, I think there's two Magnificums, and then there's three Magnificum Forgetti eyes here. I've got a couple of more of those down below just waiting to grow. They're still germinating. Over here, we have an Oxalis. I absolutely love Oxalises. I probably say I specialize in growing oxalises. So this one here is called a Corimbosa orticula reculata, I think, probably getting that wrong, I'll put the name down below. Um, but these two just need a little bit of help. I've got quite a lot of these growing at the moment. So I put them in the cabinet just to give them a boost. Over here, we have my tiniest um, Melanochrysum, which was just a wet stick really, and that has really come on now. It's just about growing its third leaf really really like that so so happy about that so in this little sliding tray here i do use these and the shelves it's really helpful is a peliona a beautiful plant and then over here we have an aglaonema it's a red kind i'm not sure the full name for it just down here we have my first phalodendron florida ghost that i got and it's just about to make its fourth leaf just here really really nice plant and it's loving life in the cabinet Slightly to the left, we have an Amidrium medium, which is making this huge crawling stem. It's really annoying. I think they're well known for this because I just want it to make foliage. And then up here, we have a Vericosum. I've had this for a very long time. Absolutely beautiful. Definitely recommend it as a start of Philodendron if you're going to get into them. Down here, we have a Philodendron brantianum. Absolutely gorgeous plant. It's sitting in pond, loving life as well in that little moss pod that I've made. All the way to the back here, I'm not sure I can get it in on the camera, is a Stefiana erecta. So it's a cordex type, type plant and it's sitting in Lecca in a little vase and that's to help with the humidity. It wants super high humidity. I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a tiny green speck there at the very top and that is its growth point. So it's only just started doing that. Over here, we have my Anthurium Magnificum ex Forgetia, and I've gotten this wrong so, so many times, it f as in like the name, it feels amazing. I absolutely love Anthuriums, which is my addiction, I think, for the plants. The foliage is amazing, so I think the next leaf it's gonna make should be even bigger than that, hopefully. And then down here, we have an Anthurium Vicii. This is the second Vicii that I got, because I wanted a bigger one, but I think the original one I've got now is almost outgrown that. 
so that one needs to catch up. Just over here we've got another Melanocrysum cutting that's sitting in water and it's rooting, you can just see the roots there. Try and zoom in on that so you can see the goodness. So I'm really happy that I got that. Over here I'll just show you these, so again the same trays that normally slide in, that's what I do to sort of activate seeds and bulbs. So it's sitting on a heat mat, you will notice there is a heat mat there. And this is the only shelf that I have the heat mat on. But I use that to get these guys to start germinating. So in this one here, it's all alocasias. So this one just here. So we've got stingrays and I think there's polys in there. And then over here, they are more oxalis, corimbosa seeds that I'm just activating now. Here we have a fry deck, well, they call it a fry deck, it's actually a Alocasia michaeliziana. It only ever does two leaves and then it's just producing a third one underneath, but it's still getting there, I think it's just maturing. Oh yeah, look what I've got down here. So this is a Philodendron Florida Beauty, it's not got much variegation on it, but I was lucky to get it. It's a cutting, it's just rooting now. So I'm hoping it produces a really cool node and actually some good variegation. And then over here we have probably my most favorite anthurium in this cabinet at the moment. And that is my anthurium crystallinum silver. I do have a silver blush type down below, I'll show you that. Um, but this one, the veining on it is amazing. You just can't get it out on the camera, the, 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 the glistening sheen that the, the silver provides. Now let's go down to the next level, the lower level. So on the lower level, it's mostly cuttings, young plants or plants acclimating to the cabinet. And when I say acclimating, it's probably because I have the light on a slightly different schedule. So this one doesn't go on as much as the one on the top shelf. Um, and the fan isn't blowing as hard or as much so that they can just get used to the cabinet basically. Well, ignoring that, because that's just been there for ages. That's my Anthurium clarinarium, my tallest one, and probably the oldest one. And it does reach out, look, there's even a leaf growing all the way down there. Let's have a look then. So, top left again, in this little glass tub, I'm not sure if you can see them. They are more Anthurium magnificum forgetii seeds that are just germinating. Some of them are sprouting now. And that's how I actually germinate them, just in some damp moss like that. Then when they grow, I transfer them into their own little tub in some pond as well. And then this one here is a recovering Begonia Milano Bellata. It's like really spiky, ugly, but I love it. And over here is my Crystallinum Silver Blush. I've had that a while. It's taken absolutely ages to do anything and it has just started to sprout a new leaf. So totally happy about that. And then over here is the second Vichy. It was actually my first one. Um, it was really small, so the leaves were about this size. And now the leaves are pretty much outdoing the one that's in the top cabinet. So um, this one is gorgeous. I mean, look at that, the shine on it. It's like a shield. Over here we have Monstera Dubia cuttings. I've got a couple of these boxes. This is the only one that's in the cabinet at the moment. So we can just get a little extra help because they're small. Down here, right at the back, is a Philodendron Mamie. It's the climbing type. Um, that's just making a new growth point there because I actually cut the top and gave it to a friend. Uh, oh yeah, just here, you can just see a little bit of it. This is a, an Anthurium Crystallinum. Um, really nice one as well. Down here is quite a new plant purchase. Um, this is its original leaf. This is a Philodendron El Choco Red. This leaf will eventually fail because it's grown a new baby just down there. If I can get that to focus, look how gorgeous that is. So that's its new growth point. I'm really happy about that. So over here we have my Anthurium Warraquinum. It doesn't look amazing right now. It's got two leaves on it. These leaves are its original ones. They will fail, they will go. Um, but what's important right now is if we go right into here, it has grown a new leaf point there, which I'm so happy about. And on a double, double plus, there's actually two Warraquinums in here. We have Warraquinum 1, this one here that I'm wobbling now, 
and then here that's another one so i'm going to separate that one once his growth points have grown happy or what over here i've got loads of variegated monstera cuttings um, and one's just grown a new growth point already it's going crazy but there's quite a few in there and yeah normally i do cuttings that have a leaf on it um, but I just thought I'm going to cut an old plant up and make wet sticks with it and have a go. That's what I did. Just here we have a Anthurium regale. Not doing well, totally recovering, but it has grown a new point of growth. Just coming out there, I'm not sure whether you can see that. There's a new raised bit there. So there's loads of new roots coming out there. So I'm happy about that. At the back here, we have another Florida ghost. I just love them. I mean, who doesn't want a plant that changes colours as it grows? It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, another new purchase here. This is a, hopefully I'm going to say it right, a Monstera subpenata. So that has rooted so much now, it's actually pushing out of its little water tub that it's in. So that's the lower shelf. And that's the top shelf. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe for future videos. And if you have any questions about the plant cabinet or any plants, just message me. I really enjoy helping people out there. It's a plant community after all.